For question number 5, we are working with screw numbers. Here we have screw 3 times screw 6 minus screw 50. The important thing here is we need to know what are the operations of square roots that we can do and the things that we cannot do first. Well, as we can see here we have a multiplication. Whenever we are multiplying two screw numbers, we actually get to multiply the numbers inside. And that's exactly what we are going to do first. So we know that 3 times 6, that's 18. But then we still have to maintain the square root because we didn't do the square root yet, right? So we can actually multiply the numbers inside of the square root. And sometimes if it's a division, we also get to divide the numbers inside of the square root. All right, now let me write it down the minus square root of 50. Whenever we have a subtraction, we actually don't get to subtract the numbers inside, nor addition. For subtraction or division, subtraction or addition, we don't get to add or subtract the numbers inside. This is what we do to combine square root numbers whenever we have subtraction or addition. So let's just kind of ask ourselves, do we know what screw of 18? We don't because it's not a nice number. How about screw of 50? We also don't because that's not a nice number neither. These are the numbers that we know with square root. First, we know that screw of 1 is equal to 1. This is not that useful, but it's a good start. And the next, we know that screw of 4 is equal to 2 because 2 times 2 is equal to 4. And then we have screw of 9. That will give us 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. And then we also know screw of 16 is equal to 4 because 4 times 4 is 16. And then screw of 25 will be the next one. And we know that because 5 times 5 is equal to 25, so that's square root 25 is equal to 5, and so on. You know, we we'll have a lot more to go. But then these are just a few of them, and these numbers are called the perfect squares. We only know how to work out the perfect squares. So, as we can see, square root 18 is not a perfect square, that's why we don't know. But then, instead of looking at this as 18, we can look at the 18 as square root of 9 times square root of 2. Why did I do that? Because I know that 9 times 2 is equal to 18, and then 9 is actually a perfect square that we know. So I can look at square root of 18 and then just think about which are the perfect squares that goes inside, that goes into 18. And we know that 9 works. 9 times 2 will be 18. So that's why I chose to break down square root of 18 as square root of 9 times square root of 2. And let's just focus on this first. And the reason for us to do that is so that screw of 9 will be a regular number 3. And then we'll just maintain the screw of 2 right next to it, just like this. Alright, let me bring down the subtraction. And then we are focused on the screw of 50. We'll do the same. Let's see which, is, which is, will be a perfect square that goes into 50. Well, we know that 25 goes into 50 twice. Therefore, I'm going to break down square root of 50 as square root of 25 times square root of 2. And always write down the perfect square first because the perfect square will be a nice number in a second and then we are going to subtract um, the coefficients I will show you. But then, once again, square root of 50, we chose to break down the square root of 50 as square root of 25 and square root of 2 because we know what this is. Even though I know square root of 50 is the same as square root of 5 times square root of 10, but then none of them is a perfect square, so that's not that useful. So now we can continue. Square root of 25, we know that's 5, and then I will maintain the square root of 2, just like this. And now what good does this do? Let me ask you the question on the side. If I ask you what's, let me just put it right here. If I ask you, What's 3x minus 5x? What can we do with this? Well, we notice that because they both have the x term right here, so all I need to do is just subtract the, five, the, the 3 and the 5. 3 minus 5 is negative 2, and then all we need to do is maintain the x term. That's how we combine the terms, right? Here, we are going to do the same as well, because both of them are multiplying with square root 2. So what we can do is just look at the number in front of the square root 2, namely the 3 minus the 5. 3 minus 5, we know that's negative 2, and then we maintain the square root 2. 
because once again they are the like terms. Therefore, the answer is negative 2 times square root 2, like this. And of course, we can look at the answer choices to see which one will be our answer. And that's answer choice C right here. So this is how you take care of square root numbers right here. That's it.